I'm building a startup. Ever since I first started learning to code around 18 months ago, the end goal was never simply to learn to become a software developer for someone else. I saw the skill of coding as something different. I wanted to be able to create my own apps, to solve problems and to bring my ideas to life. So I've had this idea for this project I want to build literally ever since I started learning to code. But I have been procrastinating with this for like literally a year now. And the reason I've been procrastinating is because I never thought I was quite good enough to actually start building my own like big project, my own startup. I also felt like, oh, I still need to learn this one more thing, do this one more course. I never felt I was ready. But the truth is, you're never going to feel like you're ready, are you? So today it is finally time to take the next step on my coding journey by actually building my own startup. So what am I building then? The app I want to build is a personal finance tracking application. I've long believed that the first step to achieving true financial freedom is taking control of your finances, but I never really found an app that had all the features that I wanted. So I've always just defaulted to using my own Google Sheets templates, but they all still require so much manual work in sorting through and categorizing expenses and many other features. That I believe the right budgeting application could automate. So I want to build my own and I'm not saying that this app is going to be like the next billion dollar startup or something like that. All I know is that there is a problem that I want solved for myself and that alone is going to keep me motivated to actually go through with this. The point of this project and the point of this series that I'm going to have on this channel, at least if you guys want to keep seeing this, is that number one, actually building this project is actually going to give me the experience of building a large software system. And number two, you are going to get to learn that as well because I'm going to be sharing all the lessons that I can learn from this journey. Number three, I'm going to use these videos to like try out different styles, maybe like vlogs and like more cinematic because I'm also like really passionate about filmmaking. And obviously, yeah, fourth, I'm going to get to monetize this app by making these videos even if it never succeeds. Speaking of which, as I said, the plan for this video is to talk about my plan for this startup. What is this startup that I'm doing actually? What is this personal finance dashboard? And we'll be going through this in Miro, which is the platform that I'm using to plan my startup. And this video is made in partnership with Miro. So this is Miro. Miro is essentially this collaborative online whiteboard platform. It's designed to be used to make project plans, to create designs, to keep track of your progress during your project. And you can also use a lot of the integrations to use things like video chat, organize meetings, create presentations and much, much more. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how I use Miro to plan my startup. There's a couple of different things I'm doing here. So first of all is my plan for this entire startup, so like what I want the app to be. So I've sort of drawn a diagram. So here's sort of what I have in mind. First of all, we have the user who is doing two things. They can see the user dashboard, which is they can, where they can like track their expenses, create budgets, calculate how much they need to become financially free and all these things that I have in mind. And they will also be uploading the transaction data either by an API, if I can find one, I think they do exist from the dashboard, it will go into my backend. The front end will be written in React. So that's what this node here is for. And to implement authentication and authorization, I'm going to be using something called OAuth, which is like this easy way to implement, like essentially the functionality of like logging in and registering users. Then we will have a Node.js backend server. So when the user enters data, it will flow through the dashboard, flow through the React frontend into the backend server. It will be stored in a database. And here, uh, a thing that I will need to figure out is how to make it all secure and like all of that essentially. But the first version for the first MVP that I'm curating, it's just for myself. It's just so that it has the needs that I have. But then in the future, if I want to make this available to other people, otherwise, obviously there will be a lot more things that I will have to figure out. And so there will be one database for the user data, another one for the transaction data. And then from this database, the data will be managed and processed, which this arrow here shows by the backend server. So this is sort of uh, a very high level overview of all the different components that I will have to build for my startup. So if we go into here, actually, let's go up. This is sort of, a, again, a very high level plan. 
I'm not a designer, as you can see. It's not doesn't look very good, but it's like we'll have a couple of these tabs, and then on here I've created these diagrams that I will be expanding over time. I like removing things if I decide not to do something. Just have like all the features and the functionality that I wanna implement for all these different parts of my app. So yeah, this is something that I'm doing. And so many like templates that you can choose in Miro. It has this templates folder. If you click on templates, it has all of these full of flow charts, mind maps. So other than that, I also use Miro to have uh, these designs where I just have the design board for like all my designy stuff, which is like the thing that I'm most afraid of because I am terrible at CSS. Then we also have competitor analysis where I'm gonna be compiling some information about like different apps. So there's this app called Wallet that I'd be using myself, but it just didn't really have all the things I want. So I don't really use it anymore. I just use my Google Sheets nowadays. Um, so uh, yeah, I was just come up with some like things that these apps do well, things that they don't do well, things that they do okay. And this is also a, just a template that I chose. I think I brought like competitive or something, yeah, competitor analysis. I just use this template for this one. And then there's mint.com, which I haven't been able to use because one of the bad things about it is that it's only available in the US, which makes me think, and I know that this app is very popular, is that if I can just make something that's even as good as this one, and I just release it so that it's available outside of the US, that could leave a huge international market that's like open. Then the last thing I have here is the ticket board, which I plan to use to like keep track of all the tickets. And this is also, what you'll do in any software engineering job, for example, where there's like backlog of all the tasks that will have to be done. I haven't really filled this out yet, but for example, I know that for the front end, we'll have to be building uh, a nav board and I'll have to first find a good design. And then there's gonna be a lot of individual items that I'll have to start creating for all these different pages. I have a separate board for the back end. For example, for now I have, I need to find an API. And to implement logging and registering, that'll be much later. Again, this was just based on a template, which I think it was the Kanban board, uh, Kanban framework. I think it was this one that I used for this. So that is the high level plan for my startup. So I'll make a couple of episodes. If you guys enjoy it, I'll keep doing it because my real plan was always to like become a tech entrepreneur, not a tech employee. I figured by actually sharing my journey from the get go, I could give you the most value and if it ends up, end up succeeding it's going to be the coolest thing in the world if this whole journey is literally documented on youtube i want to make this video because i want there to be something in 10 years when i know all about computer science maybe i'm the next mark zuckerberg i founded the new big tech startup probably not by the way but i have big dreams okay i want to be able to look at this moment and say oh there he was in some random forest in finland basically not knowing anything and i think it would, it would just be really cool for me to be able to look back at my journey so where if someone finds value in this that's amazing but even if no one ever watches these videos i still want them have them out there because i think it's cool to document your journey i think more people should be doing this I but like i said the point of this startup series is not uh, this is gonna make me a billionaire. <laughs> the point of this startup series is to be a learning journey for me and hopefully a learning journey for you. So thank you so much for watching this episode. Thank you for supporting this channel because it's your support of these videos that makes these videos possible, that allows me to keep making these and to put in a lot of effort into these. And growing this channel is literally something that has completely and utterly changed my life and it allows me to do the things that I want, which is create things, both in terms of creating things with code and also create videos. And it's this creative aspect of making something from nothing that got me excited about the idea of coding in the first place. And I feel like I put off actually doing that and focusing on building something big from scratch for way too long. But now it's finally time to start. I hope you're excited too. I can't wait to fail. Can't wait to fail a lot of times because I cannot wait to learn from all my failures.